Hello dear students, welcome to this video class. Today we discuss another type of liquid liquid system that is immiscible liquid system. In the previous class we learned about partially miscible liquid system especially phenol water system. Now here there are two liquids which are totally immiscible. So they will remain as two separate layers making up two phases and also above the liquid surface there will be vapors of both liquids which constitute another phase that is vapor phase. So altogether it's a two component three phase system right. So examples are CS2 water system, CCL4 water system, chlorobenzene water system. You can see that here one is a polar liquid that is water and the other is an organic or a non-polar liquid which are totally immiscible. So two immiscible liquids in contact with their vapor constitute two component three phase system. So applying phase rule here what you get? F equal 2 minus 3 plus 2 equal 1. That is at constant temperature vapor pressure is constant for all compositions. That means if you fix the temperature and mix the two liquids in any proportion vapor pressure will be the same. That means each liquid contribute independently to the total vapor pressure. Suppose the two liquids are A and B in contact. The total vapor pressure will be the sum of their individual vapor pressures that is P0A and P0B respectively regardless of their amount. That is very important. Whatever proportion you mix them they will be giving the same vapor pressure as long as temperature is constant. So we can write P total equal P0A plus P0B. Okay, uh, for example, let us make it a um, bit more clear. Suppose you have a beaker containing two liquids, right, which are immiscible. So there are two layers. Suppose this is A and this is B. And you know that above the liquid surface there will be vapors of the two liquids depending upon their vol volatility right there will be vapors above it and uh, if you close this beaker this vessel there will be a vapor pressure above the liquid surface in the vapor phase there will be a definite amount of a molecules which depends on its volatility and also there will be a definite amount of number of B molecules based on its volatility. So the total vapor pressure here we can write it as Pt is equal to P0A plus P0B. Okay. That is by Dalton's law of partial pressure. Remember here P0A and P0B are independent of one another. That solely depend on that particular liquid, its nature, its volatility. Okay. Now, let us assume that these vapors above the liquid surface, they obey idle gas law. So we can apply idle gas equation to each each of the vapors. What we can write for the liquid A, we know idle gas equation is PV equal to NRT, right? So applying writing equation for both the liquids, P0A, right? That is the pressure due to the vapors of A 
suppose V is the volume, the total volume of the vapors above the liquid surface, equal, and suppose the number of moles of A vapors are Na, right? and then gas constant R and suppose the temperature is fixed as T. Okay. Now, similarly we can write equation for B vapors as P0B into V equal number of moles of B above the liquid surface is NB into RT. You can divide the two equations and what do you get? P0A by P0B equal NA by NB. Isn't it? This equation has a lot of applications for numericals. We will see that later on. Okay, now this liquid liquid immiscible system has an important application in organic analysis, especially in organic preparations, analysis, etc. That is steam distillation which is one of the important method of purification of organic compounds you might have learned this in your uh, plus two courses what is steam distillation certain organic liquids which are having very high boiling point and which are susceptible to decomposition that means they are not thermally much stable or they decompose before reaching their boiling point, they are purified by a method of distillation called steam distillation. What is the principle? Here you will pass steam through the liquid and the liquid is steam volatile. So that is another condition for steam distillation. The compound should be steam volatile. What does it mean? When steam is bubbled through the liquid, the liquid get volatilized or vaporized. Okay, So a process in which a heat sensitive water insoluble liquid which is steam volatile is distilled at a lower temperature than its normal boiling point by passing steam through it. So the advantage is that you need to have a low temperature for boiling this liquid. Its normal boiling point is quite high but you are able to boil it, distill it at much lower temperature. So you can save money, it's very economic, right? And also that uh, this liquid cannot be distilled at its normal boiling point because it's too high and also it may decompose before reaching the boiling point. The principle is that the boiling point of a binary immiscible liquid system will be lower than that of either of its components. You know the definition of boiling point? Boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid become equal to the external or atmospheric pressure. For example, generally you know the boiling point of water under normal pressure is one, uh, 100 degrees Celsius at one atmosphere pressure. That means when you heat water and temperature goes up, its vapor pressure increases and what happens at 100 degrees Celsius? Its vapor pressure becomes so high, so much that it is equal to one atmosphere and it starts boiling. So here in steam distillation, above the liquid there will be vapors of both liquids here one will be water vapor and the other will be the liquid vapor so the liquid will boil at a lower temperature than its normal boiling point with the assistance of water vapor or steam since the total vapor pressure is independent of the relative amount of the liquids as I said earlier, the boiling point will remain constant as long as two layers are present. Another condition for steam distillation is that the two liquids will be should be immiscible, isn't it? So the two liquids are immiscible and that mixture will boil at a lower temperature than the boiling point of either components. So the basic equation is the same. 
P total is equal to P zero A plus P zero B here. Suppose A is water, so it is P steam, or we can call it aqueous tension plus pressure of the liquid. Now, from the equation which we have written earlier, that is N A by N B equals P zero A by P zero B. We can rearrange this equation and get the equation given at the bottom. You know, number of moles is equal to W by m or weight by molecular weight. So N A can be substituted by what? W A by m A. N B can be substituted by W B by m B. And changing the sides, you get what? W A by W B equal P zero A M A by P zero B M B. This is a very useful equation. For what? One is that you can determine the relative amount of the two liquid vapors in the vapor phase, or obtained finally in the distillate after distillation. Another is that if you know this W and W B and P0 and P0 B are constants for a given temperature. And if you know molar mass of one liquid, suppose it is Ma, you can calculate molar mass of the other liquid, that is Mb can be calculated. Now to understand steam distillation in a more detailed way, look at this diagram, right? Listen carefully. See, this is the liquid which is to be steam distilled, purified, taken in this flask. And this flask is the one which contain water, the other liquid. And what you do, you are heating both by using burners. So the steam will come from this flask to this one. So steam is bubbled through the liquid, okay? Now, uh, suppose no steam is coming and you are only heating the liquid. What happens normally? It will boil, it will get heated up uh, and generally these organic liquids, uh, these liquids here which are taken for steam distillation are generally less volatile, okay? So that vapor pressure will be very low. That's why they are high, they are having high boiling point. So on increasing temperature, vapor pressure slowly increases and at a very high temperature, that is, its, nor, its normal boiling point, its vapor pressure may become equal to the external pressure and it may start boiling at a very high temperature. By the time the liquid may decompose also sometimes, if it is not thermally that stable. Okay? So, now when you pass steam, what happens? There is steam also above the liquid surface, it contribute to the vapor pressure, okay, and the liquid vapor also will contribute. So above the liquid now, there are two vapors, remember, there are two vapors. One is the vapors of the liquid and the other is the wa water vapor which is coming from the flask. So they together make, make up the total vapor pressure uh, and when it become equal to that external pressure, suppose it is one atmosphere, it will start boiling. So what about the boiling point now? It will be much lower. Liquid need to contribute much less to the total vapor pressure than it would have present alone. You understand? If only liquid is there, its vapor pressure has to become equal to an atmosphere which takes place at a very high temperature. If steam is also present, steam is contributing to the vapor pressure there. So liquid need to contribute a little, only uh, a little to the total vapor pressure for becoming equal to, becoming, e becoming equal to the external pressure. So liquid will be boiling at a much lower temperature than its normal boiling point. This is a steam distillation. So what happens now? It start boiling, surplus amount of the liquid vapors along with steam will come down through this. This is water condenser. See, there is a water inlet and water outlet. We are cooling the uh, vapors 
so it get condensed and is collected down in this flask in this conical flask you can see a very bright yellow that is the liquid which is now purified and above that you can see a blue layer what is it that will be water and they remain immiscible isn't it because they are immiscible liquids so you get the distillate this is the distillate and you can now easily separate you want the pure liquid isn't it now the final step of this process is that you have to take a, what is called separating funnel something like this with a wall right you must have seen in in uh, in the lab okay so you will be taking the this mixture in this okay and you will have the two layers you can open the tap and collect the liquid and avoid water above it isn't it you get pure liquid okay so that is what is steam distillation and its principle so that is written here steam is bubbled through the impure liquid in a flask heated on a sand bath preferably because the liquid you know it uh, it will need a but a stronger heating liquid boils when the total vapor pressure become equal to the atmospheric pressure which will be at a temperature much lower than the normal boiling point of either liquids liquid vapors along with steam rises up get condensed in water condenser and is collected in receiver being mutually immiscible they are separated by separate using separating funnel right now for this for uh, steam distillation so this is to be corrected for steam distillation what are the conditions liquid should be steam volatile as i said earlier liquid will vaporize on bubbling with steam number 2 it should be immiscible with water so that they will remain as two independent immiscible layers which you can separate using separating funnel number 3 it should not decompose the liquid should not decompose uh, during this process uh, so that you get the pure compound now what are the applications of steam distillation liquids having high boiling point are purified if boiling point is very high it is difficult to distill it so we can go for steam distillation at much lower temperature another one liquids which tend to decompose below its boiling point or before reaching the boiling point can be conveniently purified by steam distillation without any decomposition and number 3 extraction of essential oils are done by this method of steam distillation what are essential oils that is one of the important plant product natural product obtained from plants that is uh, fragrant oils like eucalyptus oil uh, similarly lemongrass oil uh, sandalwood oil etc which are obtained from various parts of corresponding plants like seed fruit flowers etc uh, which are uh, very light oils uh, or which are chemically called terpenoids that's essential oil and their important feature is that they have fragrance very uh, sweet smell and also they have very many applications these essential oils are characterized by steam volatility they are steam volatile so they are obtained they are extracted from plants by steam distillation now finally we have a numerical here look at this an organic liquid was found to distill freely in steam that is steam distillation at 95 degrees celsius at the atmospheric pressure of 740 mm so that's the atmospheric pressure to which the total vapor pressure has to become equal for boiling to occur the vapor pressure of pure water at this temperature is 634 mm that is aqueous tension you can call the distillate contain 55 percent by weight of the organic liquid calculate the molecular mass of the liquid we already have this equation that is wa by wb equal p0 ma by p0 mb right so that's the equation to be used for this numerical uh, we can write the equation first to figure out the data 
W A by W B equals P zero A M A divided by P zero B M B. Correct. Now, what all things given and what is asked? Look at the dot again. The distillate contains fifty five percent by weight of the organic liquid, so you have to fix them. What is A and what is B? Suppose A is the liquid. You can call, you can fix it anyway. Doesn't matter. Suppose A is the liquid, and B is water, right? So, the distillate contains fifty five percent by weight of what? the liquid so suppose that means wa is 55 gram suppose right if wa is equal to 55 gram it's given in percentage right so we can take in any unit doesn't matter then what is wb then wb is 100 minus because it's percentage right wb is how much you get Forty-five gram, isn't it? So we get that forty-five gram. Okay. Now, so that is there. Now, what about P zero and P zero B? Look at the question again. You can see that vapor pressure of pure water is six hundred thirty-four mm. What is that? That is. P zero B, isn't it? B is water, so P zero B is obtained. Then what is P zero A? It's given that the atmospheric pressure is seven forty mm. That is the total vapor pressure going to be. So you can subtract and get P zero A. So seven forty minus six thirty four. What you get? You get P zero A. Now what else? You have to calculate what? Molecular mass of the liquid that is M A is to be calculated. What is M B? Molecular mass of water that is eighteen. Okay, so you easily get. You can work out M A easily, right? So that is a kind of numericals to be done in this section. I am giving you two questions for practice. Do it in your notebook. Number one, discuss the principle of steam distillation. So you should clearly explain. principle of steam distillation what is steam distillation what are the criterion for a liquid to be steam distilled and what is the underlying principle mainly it is that the boiling point of a liquid liquid immiscible mixture will be lower than the boiling point of either liquids you have to explain using the definition of boiling point okay now another is a numerical A very similar one. A mixture of chlorobenzene and water distills at nine hundred nine hundred degrees Celsius, or maybe it is ninety degrees Celsius. I think, not nine hundred. The the second zero is the degree. Okay, correct it. And seven three seven hundred thirty four point four mm pressure. So that is a pressure, total pressure. At this temperature, vapor pressure of water is given. That is five twenty six mm. So from the difference you get vapor pressure of the liquid that is chlorobenzene. Now what is the question? Calculate the ratio by weight of chlorobenzene to water. So you have to be careful about the ratio. It is chlorobenzene to water. So suppose you are taking A as chlorobenzene, B as water. You have to get W A by W B, isn't it? Okay. So P zero A is the P zero B can be obtained from difference. Then M A and M B R is is obtain is known because if it is water, you know uh, M B is eighteen as before, and for chlorobenzene, you know all atomic mass are given. You write the correct formula, chlorobenzene, and uh, you can easily calculate what is chlorobenzene. Chlorobenzene is this one, right? So what is the molecular formula? C six H six is benzene, where one H is replaced by chlorine. So it will be what C six H five Cl. 
you can add up all atomic mass and get the molecular mass of chlorobenzene also and you can work out what is wa by wb okay so that's all for now that's the end of steam distillation now we are left with one more thing in liquid liquid immiscible system a very interesting case that is to a an immiscible liquid liquid system in contact we are adding a solute which is soluble in both the liquids right a common solute is added which will dissolve in both the liquids which are immiscible with each other so there will be an equilibrium existing between the two liquids with respect to this solute and that is explained by an important law that's called Nernst distribution law and its applications in the next video thank you